All right, guys, so today we're gonna to talk about type one diabetes. Should they do keto or should they not do keto to minimize the risk of ketoacidosis, okay? So first thing, let's talk about what is a type one. It's a situation where the cells that make insulin are dysfunctional. They're not making insulin anymore. So you have no insulin production, okay? So you have to take insulin. Why? Because insulin lowers blood sugar. And if you don't have any insulin, you're gonna have very, very high blood sugar levels, and that's really bad. Now, let's say, for example, you're a type one, and you forget to take your insulin. Your blood sugars will rise, okay? So let's say, for example, they get up to 300 or more milligrams per deciliter. Okay, that's pretty high. So when you have this high sugar and no insulin, you can't absorb the glucose because insulin is like the key that opens the door to allow the glucose to go in the cell. No insulin, you can't, that glucose can't get in. Now, an exception, your brain. Your brain can absorb glucose because it's not dependent on insulin. So mentally you might feel fine, but there's a lot of other problems happening with the body. Now, what the body will do, if you can't use glucose, your body is going to break down fat and the fatty acids and ketones, same thing with muscle and even organs. It's gonna start breaking these down to deliver some fuel to such a degree that potentially your ketones can get very, very high. So if they're over nine up to like 15, that can be very dangerous. But realize this is happening because the person's not taking their insulin, okay? And they're probably requiring a lot of insulin too because they're not on the right eating plan. The more carbs that you eat, the more insulin you need. When you do keto, the need for insulin goes way, way down. So if you don't have to take as much to regulate your blood glucose, you're gonna have less ketoacidosis. Now realize that when the ketones are that high, you're getting a lot of acid in the body. So your pH can change uh, to go more on the acid side and that's very dangerous. And this is why it's so important when you're doing keto to do the healthy version of keto. And I'm talking a lot of vegetables. The vegetables have alkaline minerals that help buffer uh, this acid situation. So it's gonna be really hard to get this condition if you're consuming a healthy diet. Because what happens if you have high blood sugar and you're not taking enough electrolytes from either vegetables or externally, then you're gonna actually lose your electrolytes. You'll lose uh, potassium because when the, if you have high sugar, even like above 225, you're gonna start spilling off glucose into your urine. And with that comes a lot of electrolytes. So you're gonna lose your electrolytes and you need these for heart function to prevent arrhythmias and, and not to mention a lot of other things as well. So we have um, de severe dehydration with no electrolytes, it's very dangerous. High sugar, which creates a whole bunch of issues. Ketoacidosis, which actually is very, very dangerous. But if you understand this mechanism, you can prevent this problem. Number one, make sure you monitor your blood glucose levels so then you can know how much insulin to take because when you go on a keto plan, the need for insulin goes down. So what's gonna happen, you're gonna not need as much over time. Do the healthy version of ketosis to make sure that you're taking the electrolytes. If you are ever in a situation where you have ketoacidosis and you have high levels of ketone, if it's above nine, what I would recommend is to start taking electrolytes very fast, potassium, magnesium, and even sodium, because those things will help buffer uh, the damaging effect from that acid. But if you're doing healthy keto, you'll never end up in that situation in the first place. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. 
the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay, If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.